So in section 8.1, um, our goal is to find the length of a curve C defined by y equals f of x, where x is between a and b, where f prime is continuous on the interval from a to b. So f prime being continuous means that the derivative always exists. Okay, so how can we go about finding our formula for arc length? Well, let's start by drawing a picture of the curve whose length that we're trying to find. So I have some function here, um, y equals f of x and mine, whose um, length I want to find between two points a and b. Okay, so thinking about how we're going to find this, this arc length, we want to think about our slice and sum idea. So I can use what I know about um, the distance between two points that are connected by a straight line. So I think about dividing my interval here into lots of subintervals. Okay, and so I have some x um, i minus one here and some x i. Okay, so I can think about the distance between those two points, or I can think about the distance between the point pi minus one and pi. Okay, well, what do I know about the distance between two points? The distance between this point pi minus one and pi, okay, will be the square root of um, the difference between the x value squared plus the difference between the y value squared. Okay, so notice that the, the difference between my x values here, xi minus xi minus 1, would be equal to delta x. So I'm going to have here the square root of delta x squared, plus then I'll have the difference between my y values. So I'll have yi minus yi minus 1 squared here. Okay, notice that this um, distance formula here is exactly what we would get from the Pythagorean theorem. I have like a triangle here connecting these two points by a line segment where this leg here is delta x and the height of the triangle is yi minus yi minus 1. Okay which is why the hypotenuse here, the distance between those two points, is the square root of delta x squared plus yi minus yi minus 1 squared. So how can we turn um, what we know here about the distance between two points in a line segment and somehow be summing up something like that to get um, a Riemann sum that we can then recognize as a definite integral? So we're going to have to do a little bit more um, calculus on this to turn this into something that we can work with. Okay, so notation wise, I'm just also gonna um, rewrite this slightly. I'm gonna say this is the square root of delta x squared plus delta y i squared. Okay, notice that the delta x over each interval would be the same because I've done delta x is b minus a divided by um, n here, but the difference um, between the y-coordinates over intervals will be different depending on sort of how steep the curve is over those different intervals. Okay, so our goal is to try to turn this, um, the sum of pieces that look like this, this square root into something that we can recognize as being connected to our function, be able to write down um, a limit of our Riemann sum there. So here's an important result that we're going to use. So notice that we were told that f prime is continuous. Well, if the derivative is continuous, that means that f, our original function, is continuous and differentiable. Okay, since f prime is continuous, that means the derivative always exists, so f is differentiable. And if f is differentiable, it must be continuous. So since f is continuous and differentiable over the whole interval, it's continuous um, and differentiable over each subinterval here. Okay, so those properties being continuous and differentiable over a closed interval are the requirements to apply the mean value theorem. So let's see why that's going to be helpful here. So since f is continuous and differentiable by the mean value theorem, Okay. 
there's a point in the interval. So we'll call that point xi star. Okay, so that the following is true. So that um, the slope of the secant line is equal to the slope of the tangent line at that point. So that's, this means that delta yi over delta x, which would be the slope of the secant line. So I could also write this as um, f of oops, xi minus f of x i minus 1 over delta x. Notice that that's also the same thing as saying yi minus yi minus 1 over delta x. Okay, All of the, these three different ways is, are um, just different ways of writing the, the slope of the secant line. But what the mean value theorem is saying is that that's equal to f prime of xi star for some point in my interval. Okay. So what I'm trying to do using this result is take this delta yi thing and write it in terms of my function f um, so I can have some kind of f of x, something based on f of x in there. So notice I can take this um, equation that we were just able to write down and write down that that means that delta yi, the difference in the, the y values on, on the interval, is equal to f prime of xi star times delta x. Okay, So this is the, the key um, part in this work that's going to allow us to rewrite this square root into something more useful. Okay, So using this information we can say that the square root of delta x squared plus delta yi squared equals the square root of delta x squared plus f prime of xi star delta x squared. Okay, So notice that with some algebra here, I have a delta x squared in each of these two terms, so I could factor that out. So I would have delta x squared here times 1 plus f prime of xi star squared. Okay, So notice that now I have the square root of a product of two terms. I can take the square root of delta x squared and write that as delta x. So I have delta x times the square root of 1 plus f prime of xi star squared. Okay, So now what can we do with this? Well now we can say so our arc length here Okay, well we know that our arc length is approximately the sum of the line segments. Okay, which means it's approximately the sum from i equals 1 to n of each of these pieces. Each of these, these delta x times the square root is the, um, the length of a the line segment over the ith interval. OK, so we're getting very close to what our formula is going to look like here. So L is approximately that. Well, that means that our arc length then would be equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of this sum. So as we take um, smaller and smaller intervals here, we would get this limit of our Riemann sum. And then we can recognize that this is equal to a certain definite integral. Okay, so this brings us to our arc length formula where we can see that our arc length will be equal to the integral from a to b of the square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared dx. So here's our arc length formula that we'll be applying. Okay, and of course the conditions on this were that um, f prime is continuous on the interval from a to b. Okay, So a couple reasons why we went through that derivation. One, now we have a better sense of where this formula comes from. Um, if we remember that um, 
the distance between two points has to do with this, the square root of something. We kind of see why it makes sense that we have a square root in this formula. Um, we also got to see an application of, of the mean value theorem applied within this derivation. But I hope the derivation helps you remember this formula um, so you can use it within our different examples.